Em comida não está sendo a tua a tu apresenta resultar o projeto minha parte no tempo a minha presença. Aí o ministro vai estar tá sendo o presidente do secretário. Thank you, Julio. I'd first like to offer my respects to the Ministry of Health, Dr. Adetta Maria Fretos Belo, U.S. Ambassador, Honorable Kathleen Fitzpatrick, my respects to the USAID Mission Director, Mr. James Wright, and my respects to the Municipality Administrator from Cova Lima, Senor Afonso Noguera Nahak. Also to the directors, departments, heads, and officers from the Ministry of Health and INS, representatives and officers from UN agencies, national and international NGOs, friends and colleagues. In this presentation, I will share the key results of USAID's reinforced partnership with the Ministry of Health to strengthen the health system in the INS and in Covalima, to provide maternal and neonatal child health and family planning services and to improve health outcomes. Today, I will share highlights also of the SARA and CAP surveys, as well as project data. We will hold technical meetings in November for anyone interested in more details and discussion about the endline SARA and CAP results. Let me begin with a brief overview of the project. USAID's Reinforce was a five-year project implemented by JSI. It ends officially on December 22nd this year. This report on our learning and results is a key step in the closeout process. Reinforce was designed around four basic elements. You can see on this graphic number one to your left was the baseline during which we collected SARA and CAP data in Covalima. And this was the foundation of the design of activities and the focus of technical assistance. We then collect, if you follow the line across through to the end line on the right side, we collect the same data at the end of the project to measure change. And these are the highlights we're reporting on today. Number two up top is a major part of the project was to strengthen health services by supporting the INS, and the in-service training systems and the health facilities where services are provided. Below that, you can see number three, and that was to encourage healthy behaviors through a series of engagements with communities, to increase knowledge and promote healthy choices to benefit the health of women, children, and their families. The use of data for decision-making number four, which is at the bottom, um, was built in and consistently used throughout the project. The government and USAID selected Covalima as a model municipality. We worked in seven sub-administrative posts with health posts and CHCs, community health centers, and our outreach supported 120 communities. And you can see the facility types identified here on this one. Oh. Uh, USAID's reinforced project did not work with communities in SUCOs where other partners were established with health programs. USAID's reinforced partnership with INS. During that partnership, we based a senior technical advisor, Dr. Nelson, at the INS to provide significant support to the implementation of the 2014 to 2019 strategic plan and the development of the 2020 to 2024 strategic plan, now guiding the work of the INS. INS strategy development included consultations with government and key partners on priority needs and critical actions, and the plan reflected ongoing coordination of partner contributions. Reinforce worked with the INS to address the need for more skill practice during in-service training for clinical staff. The project also worked with the INS on updating curriculum, delivering more training and follow-up after training, and strengthening the professional network of trainers by holding regular trainer discussion forums to talk about challenges and solutions as well as identify training priorities. 
And as we heard from the trainer, Mana Carmen, in her video interview, the introduction of competency-based training, including practical training on models, has enabled more providers to be certified as competent at the end of their training. So we have now, uh, under reinforced work with the INS, three clinical practice sites at the CHC Veracruz and CHA Camaro and SWI Referral Hospital and the four skills lab. They're all very important resources in the INS training system. INS has established an additional skills lab in Okuse and reinforced supported networking among those trainers and the sharing of standard operating procedures. The INS and the Ministry of Health have emphasized the importance of client satisfaction. In our CAP study, the interviews with the family planning clients show that there's been a significant increase in client satisfaction. As a result of this work by the INS and Reinforce, there are now 79 trained health workers, nurses, midwives, and doctors in Covalima, now providing family planning at all facilities, 100%, integrated management of childhood illnesses in 93% of facilities, safe and clean delivery in 86% of the facilities, and BMOC, the management of obstetric complications, has been strengthened in three facilities. The SEID's Reinforce also worked with the INS to support six new trainers, bringing the total in Covalima to seven. In all, the project supported 22 new INS trainers who now train health workers from all municipalities. So we see that skilled and competent health workers are a very important part of a strong health system. They also need well-equipped and supplied facilities in order to provide quality services. USCID's Reinforce partnered with the Ministry of Health and Covalima Municipality Health Services to address facility issues that have been identified during the baseline SARA. Ministry of Health and Reinforce regularly scored facility readiness, conducted supportive supervision, they tracked and reported on stockouts, and helped the facility staff problem solve. USCID also donated essential medical equipment to all facilities in Cova Lima and to the clinical practice sites and skills labs in Dili and Sly. So you can see on this chart um, the average readiness score across community health centers and the hospital. They improved from 68% to 85% by the end line. The blue line shows your baseline score and the orange line shows the end line score. And the, the bars on the right side of the graph show these averages from 68% to 85%. Most of the facilities at CHC level or higher achieved a readiness score of 80% or higher. All facilities, CHC hospital, had 100% of the equipment on the survey list by end line. This next graph shows us the same scoring for health posts. You can see the six health posts that were uh, initiated and brought online during our project period. So of course we don't have baseline information for them, but again, baseline for all the others are the blue and the end line are the orange bars. The average readiness score across health posts almost doubled, improving from 38% to 61% by end line. So there was an increased capacity across all health posts to provide general services in Covalima. And all but one health post was fully stocked with all basic equipment on the survey list by the end line. So we've covered the skilled health workers, the training and the facilities that are equipped and prepared to offer quality services. Now we want to talk about the community use of the health facilities and how that improved. Because strengthening this availability and the quality of care are necessary parts of encouraging communities to use the local facilities. 
Trust is built through the positive experiences of some clients who then tell their family members and neighbors about the good and respectful care they received. In the CAP Endlines survey, there were statistically significant improvements in women's reported positive experiences with family planning services. For example, 59% women reported they were told about side effects of various family planning methods at baseline, and that increased to 74% by the Edline. It's also important to provide health information to help communities make health decisions. Reinforced community health officers worked with the medical staff to educate community members about the danger signs during pregnancy, the importance of ANC, PNC immunization and breastfeeding, and they helped pregnant women and their families develop birth plans so that they were well prepared. USAID's Reinforce and the Ministry of Health reached 122 communities with discussion groups, health information, films, public service announcement, outreach, behavior change communication, and CISCA. In several locations, community leaders also led sessions and provided information on family planning methods and encouraged pregnant women to attend ANC and to deliver in facilities. So we begin to see the impact of this work and the results from some of the data. With a skilled workforce now able to provide long acting family planning methods in more facilities, we see an increase from 5% to 32% of women choosing implants, a long acting reversible method. We can see this change even more in the graph looking at the method mix. This is the methods chosen by users. Again, the blue bar is the earlier baseline measurement. The orange bar is a later measurement. So this is how we can see the change. And you can see the significant change in the use of implant, which is a long acting method that provides protection for several years, and injectables, which provides two to three months. They've switched places. Injectables became the favorite choice uh, was the favorite choice earlier, but in 2020, more women are choosing implants. And these provide, of course, as I say, several years protection. This is consistent with the CAP survey finding that there's been an increase in the number of women deciding to space births at least three years. We also see some very encouraging increases in facility-based deliveries from 32% to 40% in the hospital and from 8% to 22% in community health centers. And looking at this graph, you can see that throughout the life of the project, starting at the bottom with uh, 2015 going up to 2020, um, we can see it's been a steady increase in facility-based births during that time. This change has been so significant that it reverses the preference from home births to now having a preference for going to the facility to deliver. All health faci facilities now have trained staff to deliver integrated management of childhood illnesses, which greatly improves diagnosis and treatment for several childhood diseases. And here again, we come back to the CAP survey respondents who said it was best to wait at least three years between births. That percentage grew from 27 to 49. This change represents opportunities for much better health outcomes for children and their families. Providing adolescents factual information about their health and encouraging healthy behaviors was also designed to increase their knowledge and skills. Our partners, JDN, a youth-led local NGO with significant experience in designing and facilitating workshops for adolescent peers, led the participatory sessions while the Ministry of Health provided health information. And here we see a group of girls body mapping. 188 youth at selected schools participated and many teachers, parents and health workers observed and encouraged them. During pilots in four other municipalities, Los Palos, Manantuto, Balcao, and Viqueque, there was enthusiasm for making this program available to youth in their area. Ministry of Health has now, made this, has now approved this curriculum and has made these resources available to anyone who wishes to conduct similar programs. 
USAID's Reinforce has already responded to requests from other development partners who wish to include these activities in their own projects with youth. There was another valuable outcome of this adolescent reproductive health activity, and that was the development of new youth leaders who are excited about opportunities to facilitate group activities with their peers and to share health information. We saw the benefits of this during the early state of emergency when concerns arose around COVID-19. There were many rumors and misconceptions and these young leaders were trained in the factual information provided by the Ministry of Health and the WHO. And they then shared it with others through interactive group work. The participants of these interactive work left their groups committed to sharing the facts with their families and communities. health system to be responsive to the needs of its population and to use resources carefully to address priorities, managers and decision makers need to access, need access to good quality data that's reliable and credible, and that enables them to measure effectiveness and assess progress. The need for reliable data for decision making is important at all levels of the health system. Health posts need to have accurate records of their stocks, and their clients in order to manage their services and track the history of care for each person. 30 SUKUs in all seven sub-administrative posts used health data during microplanning meetings to report results from the last quarter, assess gaps, and develop action plans. A total of 66 action plans were implemented during the project and results reviewed in the following meeting. These experiences have helped build a culture of respect for and a use of good quality data. One of the main functions of a model municipality is to demonstrate impact and to innovate or pilot possible solutions to the challenges. USCID's Reinforce and the Ministry of Health have modeled innovations in TRACOM, community-led and managed transportation for health emergencies, the skills labs were also modeled and are now widely, widely accepted, used and supported by many development partners and the INS. With our partner St. John of God, Reinforce provided management training for quality improvement, resulting in managers introducing many effective quality improvement activities. Youth leadership in the adolescent reproductive health and the COVID-19 activities clearly demonstrated the effectiveness of peer engagement and applied learning. And in Covalima, the municipality's response to COVID-19 was an excellent model of collaboration, strong leadership, and resilience in the health sector. All partners working in Covalima were brought together weekly to report, share observations, monitor progress, make sure there was no duplication or any gaps in their support. And with support from USAID's Reinforce, the Ministry of Health trained 62 youth and 70 community leaders in COVID-19 knowledge and prevention, reached 48 communities with health promotion and COVID-19 prevention messages, helped establish 44 hand washing stations, oriented health workers from all facilities on COVID-19 prevention, and included COVID-19 guidelines in all training and follow-up after training. And ongoing monitoring with all facilities confirmed that there were very few disruptions to routine essential services. So with support from USAID's Reinforce, there is clear evidence that the Ministry of Health, the INS and Covalima Municipality have taken measurable steps towards a strong and sustainable health system. Attitudes and practices at the community level have changed noticeably there is a significant increase in skilled health workers and well-equipped, well-managed facilities. Committed leadership at all levels of the health system and in the government has resulted in several activities going to scale. The Adolescent Reproductive Health Program I've mentioned um, was also approved by the Ministry of Health and the INS has opened up another skills lab and Akuse. These are all examples of going to scale and sustainability. USAID's Reinforce has had an opportunity to work very closely with the health system in Covalima and the training system at INS. 
Based on our learning, we respectfully offer some recommendations to consider in the future to build on this success. Some challenges remain. Our experience and the end line data suggest some recommendations. Transport is a priority and is a priority need for patients to reach care and for health managers to support staff, collect data and follow up after training. Waste management systems need to be strengthened. Human resource systems, including job descriptions, clear career paths and salary scales also need to be strengthened. And management training at all levels of the health system will impact quality and sustainability. So before I close, I would just like to take a moment to talk about partnerships. USCID's Reinforce has benefited from the collaboration and support of many partners during our project. We're very grateful to them for their work, their professionalism, commitment to our shared goals. We especially want to thank the Ministry of Health, including the MCH, Health Promotion, Biomedical Equipment, m and &E, and HMIS and the INS and all of the trainers with whom we worked so closely, the Covalima Municipality Administrator, DPHO and the Municipality Health Services, facility managers and staff, and the community leaders and community members. The leadership and partnership with government colleagues has led to these results and we congratulate them on their success. Thank you.